put this to that and let's just jump right into it okay so what you're first going to do is start off with a coarse bit and you want to just take off all the rhinestones that you see me doing take down the apex also and get up any lifting you can get up the lifting by running your bit over the um cuticle area as you see me doing here and it removes the lifted acrylic so you do not get greenies or any mold under your new acrylic that you're going to place on top of it this is a very important step because you don't want to trap any moisture under the nail if you skip this step you definitely will higher the risk of your client having um a greenie and you don't want that at all because if so that's what that's in they're not going to come back to you so you just want to avoid that and get all the lifting up so as you can see now once again as i said going around that cuticle you want to make sure you get up all that lifting you see i just do that by running over the cuticle i did speed this up a little bit but if you just slow it down or you go back a little bit, you can see it just gently running over it. You don't want to do it enough because you don't want to burn your client, but just enough that you're getting the lifting up, you're taking down the bulk, but you're not burning or missing any lifting. Alrighty guys, so now you're going to go in with your fine sanding band. Make sure it is not coarse. None of that because you do not at all want to burn your client. Always use a fine bit when prepping the natural nail. So as you can see, I'm just doing the natural nail. Not the acrylic, not the acrylic enhancement. Just the natural nail. It makes sure you're getting up all that cuticle as you see me doing. By the way, this part is in, is in um, regular speed so you can see how I'm just gliding over it. Now I speed it up because you see I'm just now you want to run over the acrylic enhancement just to roughen it up. But as you can see again, go over those cuticles, make sure you're not missing anything, hit those sides and you're all good and ready to go. I didn't record this step but you want to just go in and dust off and wipe off all the dust and go in now I'm going in with my gelish Pro Bond and my primer works beautifully if you can get this one get your hands on a made secret system and it'll do it beautifully guys so for the acrylic application as you can see I did this in regular speed so you can see how slowly I'm tapping it and I'm not pushing it in so you just want to go in with a very small bead near the cuticle but not on the cuticle tap it in 
push swipe push swipe whatever you prefer um i just like doing it like this then i like to just go in with the second b to build back up that apex we took down when we were taking off the previous design um you want to make sure you're just going with that second b again it got a little bit out of focus but i put it in the same spot as i did the um first b and once you do that you can repeat that with all the other nails and as you can see once again close to the cuticle bead tap 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 swipe tap 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 swipe whatever your method is and also too make sure you're not working too wet because it will create a mess because you're working so close to the cuticle Now, once you're done applying all your acrylic and it has dried, I mean, well cured, you wanna go on with, I like to personally use the 8080 grit, but if you're not comfortable yet using that course of a grit, I would use 18000. It's a very good grit for beginners and you're less likely to cut your client. If you need to, as you can see me doing, take your e-file and run under the nail so it's not no built up acrylic under there. Once you have done that, buff it out and then repeat with the other nine nails. You finished up take your duster or your caboodle and dust off all that dust and wipe down with alcohol rubbing alcohol to get off of the dust and do your design of choice my client slash cousin she wanted um the X face I don't know what you call it. I usually say purge face she wanted that so I just did the two X's and then the smiley face she didn't really want really much as you can see she just really wanted to fill in a little bit of 
pizzazz on it she had sent me an inspo picture um yeah so i had this face on it and then um i'm doing this on both of the ring fingers next i'm adding a 3d charm which i'm going to be adding with acrylic so i wanted to just put down the top coat first so i'm using the gelish top coat and this one works great alongside the ibd gel top coat both no um no wipe top coat they work beautifully and they stay very shiny for my clients and i love them Alrighty, so once you have finished up your top coat, you want to take your charm and go over it with the e-file. I thought I recorded that part, but I didn't. But just take the back of your charm and go over it with the e-file. And then after, take two to small, three little tiny beads of acrylic on the back of your charm so you can put it on your nail. Remember to cure your top coat. You don't want to put this on top of a white top coat. And then what I like to do is just have my clients lay their hand flat and hang their thumb off the table and it lays their hand super flat so the charm can dry very flat because if you're not careful the charm will lean over and if you put too much acrylic or the acrylic too wet it will lean over and dry incorrectly and then you have to take it off and it's just so annoying. So yeah, so you just want to repeat the same steps on the other hand as you see me doing. I like to go in with two little beads of acrylic at the top and the bottom or have them at you feel is necessary. Again, make sure you're working dry. You don't want to be working super wet because it will not be correct and it's going to be a hassle to take off. One at the top, one at the bottom. This just prevents snagging. With bigger charms like this, it's going to snag regardless, but it won't snag as much when you do this. 